my first duty as new chair here at seven o'clock. I guess we'll begin our meeting. And if it's all right with everybody, I thought if we could stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance, we'll start our meetings like that. The school board does it, and I really like it, so I thought we'd follow suit. We used to do it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Back in the book. COVID. Explain COVID. COVID. COVID messed everything up. Um, Next order of business is the approval of minutes from 518.23. There is a copy in your envelope. I don't know if you guys are ready to do that, if I you want to flip make through. I a motion to accept minutes from May 18th, 2023. And I would second that. All in favor of accepting the minutes as recorded from May 18th, 2023. Say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstained? No. Matt Sherland and Megan Sabasco abstain. All right. I put on the agenda for our meetings a uh, place for public comment, but nobody's here, so we're going to skip that one. And then next item of business was the proposed calendar, which is also in your envelope. Folder. What I did is I basically took the calendar from last year and just transitioned the dates over to this year. Um, I don't know if we have the town budget hearing and the school budget hearing on January 9th and 11th. Those are ours. And then the deliberative session dates aren't set yet, at least as far as I know. Is that still correct? Okay. So the kind of the boundary dates is between February 3rd and I guess the 10th. So both the that's all the way down on the bottom. So one of those Saturdays will be the town deliberative, and then the school probably on the Tuesday following usually is. Okay. And I believe they, the town usually does the first Saturday, so they have the snow day the following Saturday. So then most likely the town deliberative will be the third, although we don't know that yet. Can we just do them on the same day like we used to? That was a lot better, I think. I think we only did that one yeah, year. They've always twice. been separate. So the town was, I mean, the school has been SP2 for much longer. So the school has always done a, for a significant number of years, has done a deliberative and then the vote. And only recently the town has switched to SB2, so I think it was one year and it felt like it was um, the school board portion um, because the town had so many warrants that the school was like, you have one hour. And so, and we had to really rush through things. We felt like we're not, um, we were trying to be mindful of everyone's time, but we felt like we weren't able to get um, our things accomplished and it's a very long day for people. I think um, it was, I think that was back the way, was putting us back to what was, what was the big complaint about town meeting okay. was yeah. that you went to town meeting at 11 in the morning or nine in the morning and you got out at 11 at night or what, not quite that bad, but I think the last real town meeting that I went to, we, it closed at seven at night. Yeah, One of the challenges with that was that it has to be posted for a specific time. Mm -hmm. I remember that being part of the problem. Mm -hmm. and I, it, I, we've also done the town on a weeknight as well, one one or two years. It's just a different weeknight, and I mean, to me that was the best. But well, it's a it's a cost issue too, right? I think it costs less in total if we do it all in one day at one time. Yes, but it's it's a challenge. <laughs> it is, yeah. But that makes sense with the post the time posting um, that we I think we were under a crunch because it never really starts because the setup and you feel like it at the time you get going yeah. um, and so it doesn't allow for a lot of time of comp public comp you know we, um, we want to be able to have that dialogue but oh, for sure yeah, I, I, don't have any good I, I understand with the um, 
with the budgeting. It's gotten more expensive to have that kind of the audio visual. Um, I know it's more to have a, you know, supervise all the people to attend both. I mean, it does a lot. Um, but I, I think to allow each entity to have their own time, I, I personally think it makes sense to have them different days. I'm not sure we have the authority to right. change that's it anyway. Yeah. Say, honestly, that's not our meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let the school board and the select committee work that out. Mm -hmm. But it is a budget issue. It costs it, money. It, it costs yeah. money, right. So that's... Does the school pay for the school deliberative one and all the costs? Okay. Mm -hmm. It comes that's out of good. a separate budget. Yeah, because the town budget is going to have issues with the tax cap this year probably. The only other thing on the calendar, and Megan, maybe you can, if you want to talk about this now or later done under like other business. So the school the is going to, meeting that yeah, to the school is going to ask for an additional budget meeting within some certain dates in September, I think I talked to Sue. Sure. So I don't know if you want to do that now or if you can, or later. We could do it. It's probably a little bit more of a discussion, so I don't know if people want to have that. Yeah. Now, if you want the information about it now, I, the only other thing on the calendar, um, we did discuss it last night in our meeting, and the school would prefer to do the school default budget on the 9th, if possible. Um, we meet on November 1st, and so it's a really quick turnaround for us to get the default on the 2nd if we've just seen it on the 1st. So we were hoping, I know it has them both listed, but if the November 9th date could be the school default budget date. And then maybe the second would be more of the town default. Fine by me. And that's fine to kind that's, of take them separately. Yeah. Okay. Probably. So, so we switching those? So well, they're both listed, but the school yeah, would listed. just for timing. Our BA starts next week, so um, <laughs> that we would have the budget and be able to see it on our meeting on the first, but then really have everything we need to present it by the ninth. Default, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're either gonna strike the strike school the default budget will not be on yeah. November 2nd. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, like I said, we'll talk about it more in, you know, towards the end of the meeting for under other business, but the school has an opportunity and they're gonna ask the budget committee to meet once more in September. So we'll look at those dates at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Is this to accept the funds? Yeah, the adequacy. Mm -hmm. So we have to have a, a special meeting and a, and a warrant so the budget committee needs to vote on the warrant so, so a warrant that will go on the, the a thing warrant that will go on a special meeting on October 4th Ooh. so uh, so we have a on the we can talk about it now if everyone's fine <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we're, we're, we're talking about the calendar issue, right, so yeah. um, the um, we will be having a public hearing prior to our board meeting on September 20th to discuss it um, and um, and then following that, um, the warrant will be completed once it's, um, and then um, we will need to vote as a budget committee sometime after the 20th and before the 4th. And the 4th will be the special meeting. Um, so. Um, so that gets voted on then by just whoever townspeople show up? So that it'll be the same as um, a, like a typical work. We're allowed to do it in like all at once. So it'll be like a mini deliberative discussion. So things could be changed on the Warren article just like any deliberative. And then it'll just be a, um, I assume, a card vote. Can things we, be changed? Or is this going to be a Warren article where all the wording is prescribed? And so it is changed? prescribed, um, I believe, just like any other ones that the dollar amount could be. Um, and the discussion last night was the school board um, is going to um, propose that it be put into the operating budget to cover some of the um, building maintenance things that have come up. Um, so that is the um, primarily, so most of that, it's $186,310, which is, if everyone read the little email, um, the kind of changed the formula for the adequacy funding so we are receiving an additional money um, and so in order to receive it we have to um, you know put it to warrant for the voters so um, the process um, you can if you don't do that it can go back um, to the um, general fund um, they are strongly suggesting that although that's 
always nice to lower the tax rate that it does create the spikes because it'll go down a little and then the next year's regular budget, even if it doesn't go up, seems like a higher tax rate because when the tax rate is set, that would go up to money to offset that. And so Who the- Who's mm -hmm. they? They who suggested it from the- Department of Revenue. Um, right, the, when they, um, they presented the um, additional changes to the adequacy. Um, so- um, Are there strings attached to the money? No, it's it's based on your numbers. It's a formula, formula. free and redu free and reduced lunch numbers. There's um, basically they just changed the formula. So depending on your numbers of certain areas of need, children for you know various reasons, I could you, um, I can share the website with everyone if you want to look at how they recalculated it. Um, some of them are like a one-time thing schools are getting, and some are the formula changed. So they removed. They used to provide for schools that had third graders that were below reading level. They gave an extra funds, they removed that, but then added a new f funding source. So they, um, that's kind of based at, at the state level where they make all those determinations of how those, those funds so, come. So the money will, will that be going for towards next, uh, next year's budget? So or it's going towards the current it would be a, It would go into the current, because we would be receiving it okay. soon. And so that's why we need to have the vote. Um, so it would go into the current the uh, fiscal budget, the 23 budget. So it would be an amendment basically to the budget. And we looked at three lines that we're considering. Um, the building maintenance line, which we you know we have already <laughs> overdrawn with our, some of our things with the boiler and, and that we've had. Um, and then um, technology and uh, curriculum because the curriculum we purchased was the quote we were given, we put in the budget and we used from our reserve funds was more than so we had to buy curriculum for our students but we've already overspent that line too so so there are a couple areas we know that we have some areas and instead of um we didn't want to just arbitrarily obviously put it anywhere we really looked at what the area is. so that's what we'll be presenting and um discussing at our um, meeting on the 20th and then um, having a warrant Drafted so, after that, but we have to vote prior. So, but that. because it's a warrant article that's going to go to the voters, the um, the process is it has to come to the budget committee to be voted on, just like any other warrant, and would show the, you know, the vote at the budget committee. Right. You we know, approves, recommend recommends, or not recommends. Not recommend. <laughs> we change the wording on that. No. No, just the dollar. No, but it's because the, that'll be said after the okay. public hearing. Yep. Um, so it's okay. it's we more. Can't even change the dollar now. At the at the. De Here at the session, at the yeah. at the Weekend. deliberative Liberation. session before Weekend. we vote on the twentieth, on the fourth. So, so the the twentieth is the public hearing, mm -hmm. and then the voting, which will be like a mini deliberative and vote, um, will be on the fourth okay. of October. So if a citizen wanted to direct that um, those funds into the general fund to be returned to the taxpayers, would they so make that change at the the special meeting, or would they make the change at the the meeting where you? write up the warrant article before it comes to budget so the public meeting is to hear comments and suggestions and um, kind of an open forum to to listen to what um, the community has to say and if you know people have concerns or um, ultimately if that but if that does not pass that's what will happen with that money it will go to the general fund so Right. So we will, so we we're, we're, lose we're, we're still taking that money. money. Okay. It's yeah. coming to okay. uh, the school, but because it is coming in as a revenue that we have not um, anticipated, we have to have an approval of where that money is going. Okay. So the warrant is to put it into the, the oh. operating budget. That's, that's what's going to be our And then if that doesn't pass, it goes into the general right. fund. Mm -hmm. If it's in the general fund, can you guys spend that on a warrant article at the end of the year oh, when you guys... don't have access to what goes in the general fund. Is that, that's not the same as the unassigned fund balance? No. No. The unassigned fund balance is what is left over at the end of the school year. So if this money goes in and we put 100000 in building you know, maintenance and we use 50000 of that, technically there's 50000 left, that could be used to fund the building maintenance capital reserve fund next year if that warrant is on the... That, does that make sense? So the unassigned fund balance is the school budget. Yeah. The general fund is what is the raised and appropriated and sets the tax rate. Is so, the general fund on a 
is it a general fund for the school and a general fund for the town or is it one for both it's one for both because it's how the tax rate is created based on how much they have to raise and appropriate interesting does that right. make sense so if this money right so this hundred and eighty six thousand three ten mm -hmm. comes to the town no matter what mm -hmm. um and the last couple of years the school had four hundred and thirty mm -hmm. and and five twenty nine thousand dollars in surplus. So, right. So, if you are going to have two hundred thousand dollars in surplus next year, mm -hmm. you might as well not even have this special meeting because that special meeting costs the town money to perform this meeting. When you're just going to get that money back, and it would have to go. You can, you know. So, why bother doing this? because we still do not have year-end financials from June. Um, we were without a BA who was on medical leave. We have hired someone new, but looking at our numbers, we're not sure if we can fund our capital reserves from last year, um, which we used a large chunk of to repair the roof. We had intended some of you know funds to go in capital reserve funds. The last we looked at said 200,000 with a significant number of encumbrances still on the docket. So we're not sure where um, the end of last year ended. And if we had, a, we were told a different number, so we had approved um, a boiler, we replaced a boiler at a large money um, expense. Um, so um, expecting that to come out of that, what we had, we thought we had left at the end of the year and that number has um, gone down. So we are not, with that uncertainty, with last year's year-end budget, um, the school board um, looked at maybe just putting it in capital reserve, you know, where what we could do, and we felt, because we're so unclear with how we ended last year's fiscal year, if it's really close, if there's, we'd, we'd like to put it back in the general fund if there's funds left, I mean, that's kind of always been our, we, we could retain a significantly higher portion, and, and the school does not. Um, so um, that's, the discussion last night at the school board level was because of those unknowns that we felt that the best option for this would be to put it into the um, operating budget in those areas. And you have to decide this by September 20th? Because we're already at the point of getting close to receiving those funds. Mm -hmm. So the, um, that was October 20th. The RSA, it's the October. email, October. the email you referenced to RSA. It is September 20th. Uh, in October, in October oh, that's all we, we need to appropriate it. We'll receive the funds. We don't need to follow that RSA no, they're, process. They're, the funds are coming regardless. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, thanks. It's a funds we get every year. It's just more than what we anticipated. So we always receive adequacy funds. That's part of our revenues. Um, so um, this is just in addition to that. And so in order to do certain things with that funds, that's why we have to. That's how we follow that. How much is this special meeting going to cost the taxpayers? That's, I, I'm not sure about that. That's not something at the school board level that we, um, we just were, you know, again, went through guidance of how we can uh, make this happen. We're following the RSA and it requires a meeting. Um, well, yeah, I mean, if you want to meetings, divert uh, the funds away from the uh, general, if, if we don't, if you don't have a special meeting, this, the town will still receive the funds and it'll go against our tax rate, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. So Ellen would probably have a better mm -hmm. idea. I mean, it's not going to cost it as much as the special election for um, the state rep. Yeah. So it'll be less than that, but you know, even so. But it's a non-zero amount. Right. It's a. It's yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Non zero amount. So it costs something, it costs time as well. Doesn't much cost at all. I mean, I think, you know, no. the town already passed the school budget. I mean, I personally think it's great that we're getting more than we expected. We should just accept it and go to the general fund and reduce the tax rate. I, I mean, I think to go through this process is unnecessary. So I will tell you, I'm here from the school board, so that is the process that we're going through. We've already decided that. 
So that's it's not really a discussion for the well, budget I mean, committee right now. I think I'm just letting you know that we've already decided this process. It's well, already I put mean, in motion. Yeah, I mean that's fair. So, but it still has to go through the budget committee, so the budget committee can just can recommend it. Well, you cannot right. recommend right. it, yeah. but it's still going to go to the vote. So it would say the budget committee does not recommend on a vote of whatever to whatever, but will still go to vote. So I mean, we don't even have to hold the meeting before the October fourth date that you mentioned. That's what I'm saying. Like we're not obligated. To you. Do that. We have to bring we, it we to the budget obligated. committee. Yeah, so the budget obligated. committee has to have a meeting. Right. So the school board, so whether other people choose to attend or not, the budget committee needs to have a meeting so the RSA can be followed. Right. And right. This, right. so the yeah, school you said, board. We was, you said we were going to receive the funds even if we didn't follow right. We just right. have to have so a meeting. The though. school board has decided that this is what we would like to put forward. Like, well, what if the hearing. At the hearing, they decide. Like so, if people would like to attend the hearing the and 20th. provide that input, the school board will be the there. Meeting, the meeting still moves forward. Right. Well, you have to get the meeting right. the funds, no matter where it goes. <coughs> Excuse me. No, if we if you don't have the, the meeting, the, they just go right into the general funds. That's what was my but, understanding. But that's not what the school board. Right. So, so they, they, right. the we school can't, board yeah, the has oh, decided yeah. that this is what okay. we I would like to do. Yeah. Misunderstood. So this process is now in place. So we are asking for the budget committee to choose a date before October 4th to vote on the warrant article. So that makes sense. the warrant article will go to the voters then at our meeting with a recommendation or does not recommend from the budget committee, however the vote we, happens. And then we if could a, actually have our meeting on October 4th on the 20th right yeah. after their meeting oh. we could do that or but so if, the, if they we wanted have a school time board to write it directly or we have a school well, board meeting directly following they, that. yeah because they wanted time to write the warrants it yeah. needs to be written okay. and so, then mm -hmm. well it you, should be written so do we want to well we we hope to but you know again um hearing, right? it's a public hearing for a reason and if you know I mean so they still they might still change the wording and send it to the general fund right. based on public feedback, right? Correct. Yeah. I guess for the purpose of budget committee, how does it sound to everyone? So your meeting's on the twentieth. Correct. If we met Thursday the twenty eighth, that gives you a week and a day to get all your wording and everything submitted, mm -hmm. and then that gives almost a week. That's five or six days, depending how you count, before the fourth, mm -hmm. you'll have a recommendation. Is that a good time? I think frame? that's well, good. We, it has to go to DRA. It, has to go to DRA and everything before I believe before it gets voted on. So that gives enough time for it to just be drafted. Um, and then that's September 28th. September, September 28th. Yeah, Thursday, September 28th. Is that yeah. you think that's enough time, Megan? I can. Yeah, I think that that you know we we had to do this quite quickly, and I right. understand it falls on the heels of another election in town, but um, but yes. That's enough. So here we are. That in. All right. So then we're gonna. <coughs> We'll plan it, and then I guess if we need to make changes, you'll have to let us know. Okay. And when we meet at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock here. 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 Yep. On the twenty-eighth of September. Thank you. And that can be very quick if that's all. Not really right. that, yeah, that should be the only business that we have. Well, we could approve the minutes from tonight. Yeah. Because <laughs> that'll make our next meeting easy. Right. Yeah, that'll be real quick. Okay. Anything else you wanted to say, Megan, on that? No, I th I think that's it. Okay. Thanks. Is that anything we need to vote on? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not till the twenty eighth. Okay. All right. Calendar. So the next item I put on the agenda is. We could have a discussion. Are we done with calendar? Are we done with calendar? <clears throat> yeah, we kind of we did kind of stop on the calendar. Um, yeah, we changed the school default budget to November 9th. Does the date of November second work for the town default budget? Uh, it should. Okay. I don't see any reason why. I'm just 
wondering, John, do you remember that um, one of these dates where we got the last air professional contract, the last day? We, I didn't get to read it, so it's hard to vote on something. We can't even read the thing. So. So there are no contract, yeah, school yeah. contract negotiations this I year? Think so. Yeah. so that, and then the last year we had with the health care, it was oh another goodness. last minute thing. So I didn't, kind of, yeah. I didn't know if we needed to change dates, but I guess if it's not this year, then it shouldn't be a matter. Right, so there's no contract, so that makes life a little easier. But, but I mean, the contracts that come in for health care and things like that, it's kind of hit or miss. So, and it's like even in the high school stuff, you know, we don't. Have yeah, it seems like we just found out last minute, you know, I mean, if that happens, we just can't be <coughs> reading and push it the following week or whatever, so we can at least have a chance to read some things. So that's all I'm saying in the future. Yeah, I, I think that's mostly just dollar amount anyway. Because um, it's not, it's not part, it would be part of the contract negotiations. So it's just like the numbers that come in. So it's not going to change the contract itself. Right. So right. It's actually we just vote on it though, in right. a way. Right. For the dollar amounts. Yeah, and if it's like healthcare, they're going to they're going to say your guaranteed numbers or whatever. Is for calendar? Anybody else? No, I did have a question. I'm sorry. No, no uh, problem. Is there a CIP representative from the budget? Yeah, committee? that's me. That is you. Okay. I haven't seen anything, and I, I went online, too, and it looked like the last one was like January something, 2023. Yeah. One was canceled. <coughs> one was there. So I was trying to figure out how you find it. or. I saw committee reports and just wanted to. I don't think it's that since January. No. Um, and then the membership is in question. So the planning board discussed this. They had a joint me meeting with the ZBA last week, and um, I'm still waiting on the report from John Moore, and he was present. But I believe that the planning board was going to try to revive that committee in the membership. So I'll have yeah, more just, information probably sure. on Monday. That's fine. Even an email letter to let me know the time and date. That's all I need. You know, I was curious. I thought I was missing something, trying to find stuff. I'm like. It, it, seen it, something? It has not. It has met very late both the last two okay. years. So last couple of years, I've seen it. Yeah. The book was <coughs> start earlier as well, since we get into a very busy season once we hit December. Thank you. And Bob, do let us know if you're not able to make whatever thing get scheduled, and we can try to find somebody to get to. Yeah. Do you I know, usually know what time they start or something? Is it sort of like the same thing as the budget? Yeah, I think it's a certain days. Who people are available and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not more loosely. Oh, okay. organized, so it'll be easier for you to do that. Then. It's good. Okay. Yeah, because they don't meet weekly or anything like that. They just meet when they can. And okay. It's usually closer towards you know, formalizing budget stuff. Yeah, I didn't know if it was like summertime, fall, winter, or what. It was summer. floated that it would actually start more like now, um, so it was not at the same time as full budget, that it would almost, because it's a capital improvement plan, it should really be more in place yes. and not dependent on the budget or things that were not funded in the budget. It's, Those are it's really to not review the items that were long-term right. planned for and how we're going to get there. So that should be more now and less yeah. December. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I agree. <laughs> I, I agree. I was just kind of yes. going by historically what's been it's been historically. December and Right. I remember Michelle used to come and give us updates and stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the time. She used to go to a lot of them. That was a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. I believe. That's it for calendar. Right. If anything changes, I mean, hopefully it's pretty good. Can I make a recommendation that we Absolutely. reverse? Six and seven, so that we discuss the roles and responsibilities of the Coast Guard conduct. I think it's probably pertinent. Sure. Is there a second to John's motion to? Sure, I'll second. Reverse items six and seven. So item seven, just now six. Oh, uh, all in favor? Okay. Uh, I found this article on the NHMA website.
and it's in your manila folder. Municipal Budget Committee Roles and Responsibilities. It was written a few years ago. It's kind of a general guide to what we can do and what we can't do. And so I don't know if you had gotten a chance to read it. I know you guys got a number of emails um, if you had seen it. Um, but I just thought we could kind of flip through this. And if anything stands out, um, take a few minutes and talk about what we, yeah, like I said, what we can do, what we can't do. And that way we can stay within our, our lane. Should we really prepare the budget? Do we want to start with zero budget? Just start with zero and go line by line and put everything in one at a time? That's what Gene Reed always wants to give budget Has that ever back been to done? Yeah. Has that ever been done? Zero <coughs> based budgeting? I'm sure someone's tried it. You read this, we're supposed You're to prepare the budget. I was going to say, well, it's in the RSI. Oh, I, the budget. <laughs> I totally it's prefer when you guys bring it to us. <laughs> that is a lot of time. I mean, as yeah. a school Do you member, really we want just to prepare see the, the budget, budget time? The preparation yeah, for of what you're asking for. I don't want to be doing this. That is a lot of time. And I, you know, school board members, and I, I'm sure, I don't, yeah. you know, you, they is. also hear the budget and then have to repeat the budget. So we. I don't think it's bad. It's almost like TurboTax. Once you get into it, it's easy every year. I mean, I read up and down the 1040 and 1040 Z back and forth, upside down, and businesses. Once you get really <clears> dive deep into it, it's, it's really not that big of a deal, but people go, you know, taxes like, oh, here, I can't do it. It's not that difficult. The main, the main line that right. comes <laughs> out to me. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, uh, I, I just want to make a quick comment, though, first. Sorry. No, no go ahead. Um, we are an official budget committee. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, recognize what was that, 3214? So, I, so that Second was put paragraph. in place years ago. So that's that's what guides us. So we are official, not advisory. Yeah. Anyway, and then I, I was you know looking down underneath the bold headed line overview of budget committee. It says the purpose of the budget committee is to assist the voters in the prudent appropriation of public funds. I know some comments have been made to me after some meetings. They're like, you have no right to do this. You have no right to do that. It's like, well, actually, we do. Because if we feel like this is the voters had elected us to give our opinion, whether it's a prudent appropriation of funds or not. So we, we can, not that we meddle, or not that we bring our biases, but we can adjust the budget if we feel like it's out of line. I, just, I thought that was interesting. And it gave me like some confidence. We're like, no, this is what we're elected to do. And so when we do bring up these things, it's like we have power to say that's not prudent and the town shouldn't be spending tax dollars on it. So. Yeah, it's probably good to, to reiterate. If you, if you go to the um, budget, budget workshop, I think we're going to discuss at some point, they will teach you about the court case Brentwood School District versus Budget Committee Town of Brentwood. Um, and in that one, the judge referred to the budget committee's role as that of a quote fiscal watchdog meaning that the budget committee <coughs> certainly can seek to make cuts that in its judgment result in a more manageable budget for taxpayers i had question about the 10 percent limitation that that whole uh thing at the end of it i most of it most of what i read i was pretty much aware of that 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 was there um i'm embarrassed to say that i I didn't know anything. I don't know what that all refers to. Can someone help me with that? Sure. So if the number that we recommend cannot be adjusted by more than 10% at oh, the okay. of session, and it's like a total number, unless there's, there's ways that like more articles can be written that say this is outside the 10% rule, you know, so that it can still be voted on, but it has to be more in a certain way. So, so if we go into a deliberative session with um, a, a number, it 
can't go up or down more than 10% from that number. Right. But it doesn't refer to the number of warrant articles couldn't be more than 10% of the total. It includes what does it? the warrant articles. It includes the, warrant includes articles. the special okay. warrant articles in the operating budget. And I think okay. this, this exception here, it says a warrant article for a bond. So I think that's when they want to do a real big thing like from the school. Like a road or okay. something. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Right, it, yeah. And it, but there, so <coughs> in theory, like if there was something in a warrant article for X dollars and the town wanted you know to put that into the operating budget you know and it would if it changed the operating budget by more than 10 percent but took down the warrant article back down to zero or something that would be fine because it would be still within that range so gotcha okay that was the only one that i really just for a point of clarification on that just to make sure i'm reading this right it says it cannot exceed <coughs> the total recommended by the budget committee by more than 10. That means it can't go up by more than 10, but does that also control going down by more than no. 10? No. Okay. So it's only up by more than 10. I wasn't, I didn't go back and check my notes. I figured that's what it meant, but. Essentially, what we do, but as I said, it kind of outlines what we can do and can't do. So. And it does reference the RSA specifically, so if there's further questions, you can go and look at them. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's, that's a good summary. All sorts of good stuff on the New Hampshire is it the municipal it? website. A bunch of it this summer. Yeah. <coughs> going to the workshop. Yeah, I'd like to go to the workshop. Yeah. I think that um, online, unless something changed, if you talk to the town, they can register you. Like, and it's easier than getting your reimbursement. Okay, that's uh, worked for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I did register, and I got a, <coughs> in, in a couple of days. So I am going in person. If anyone yeah. wants to go, well, I just figured I'd get more out of it if I went. Yeah, no, person. It was when I attended in person. It was really good. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. What is the date for that again? It's September 12th, you can do it in person or Zoom, and then September 19th, they're doing in person only. September 12th. So it's next Tuesday and the following Tuesday. Right, so the 12th is the one up in Bedford? Or yes, it's and then the, the 19th is up in the North Country. I think it's in Lancaster. So, so with the Manchester Country Club, last time I was there, the food was excellent. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> Is it cheaper? Do it online. Dairy Field Restaurant. Yeah, no, I, think, I think it might be $10 difference. It's, it's $75 yeah, it's a, yeah, and $100. It's 70, versus, 70 versus 100 yeah. I said, so I was jumping around, but it doesn't really matter. So I wrote to them because I can't go on those days. And they wrote back and they said, hi, Mike. Uh, if you can't attend in person or do it like live on Zoom, uh, they can receive a copy of the recording after the workshop is over. However, in order to receive the recording, they still need to register and pay in advance. We only send a copy of the recording if payment has been received. So basically, your members will register and pay, and then they can act as a no-show, and we will get a copy of the materials and recording sent to them after the program is over. All registered and paid folks receive the materials and recordings regardless if they attend in person, are a no-show, or attend Zoom live that day. So. Seems like, but you do need to pay ahead of time uh, before the meeting on the 12th. And then is the town paying, or is the town paying for some of this? Is, or, yeah. Or? yeah. So yeah. then this is from this is from Kelly Kelly Delaire at the town office. She says, if you have proof of payment, likely an email and confirmation, forward me a copy of that. I will print it out and get it to Betsy, our bookkeeper. If you'd like to email her directly, checks are issued every two weeks as they're signed by our Board of Selectmen. So there's the time frame for reimbursement. Make sure you provide your address and mailing address. And then if you need help with that, you can email me and I could forward you Kelly's or Betsy's emails for reimbursement. So. Could you send that to me? Sure. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll take a copy too, please.
I think I've already registered for something else that day, but I'll see. <laughs> Can't get enough, huh, Sandra? <laughs> Food's excellent. Food's excellent. Food's excellent. That's right. yes. <laughs> Carpool with Charlotte and have excellent food. Like what go. more could you and want? Great company. And company. <laughs> if I go, I'll carpool with you, okay? Fair enough. Food's excellent. Anybody call me? I'm on the road. All right. So that's that. That uh, was items number eight are done. Seven's done. Uh, back to six. <clears throat> Um, my idea for item number six was that sometimes our meetings are like the Wild West in here. And so I was hoping we could have a discussion of how we can you know, resolve disputes with free and open exchange of ideas, but without interrupting or people getting their toes stepped on or feelings hurt. Because everybody has something good to say, and uh, it's just a shame when it kind of dissolves into bickering. So. I didn't have any like firm ideas of what we could do or ideas we could set as a board um, just to make sure everyone can speak without being interrupted and keep things timely but yet everyone have be able to save their share so that was I don't know if we I didn't write anything I didn't have anything detailed but um, maybe we can come up with some ground rules or ideas uh, right I mean all we can really do is ask for that respect because um, <laughs> Officially, we can't do any punishment for somebody not following rules. Um, so we just really need to be respectful to each other. I think the chair should bring a gavel. And <laughs> well, honestly, we used to have a gavel. Oh, Ooh. No, and right. Yeah. Yeah. I like I this. <laughs> I agree. Right. I yeah. think that's the best thing to do is bring back that gavel wherever it is. In order one of Amazon. Out the it, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's buried it in a closet in somewhere. The, it used to be in the little mail room. <laughs> um, but yeah, I haven't seen it since I've been back on the, the budget committee. But we used to have that. Michael was a big fan of it. Um, and basically, the chair would just use it to kind of bring order back. Keep order. Now, do I get to hit people with it, or is oh. it for yeah. yeah. you? I do you have can. a clown yeah. Halloween yeah. one yeah. if you want that one. Our YouTube yeah. views are going to go through the roof. <laughs> well, Ellen, there's your assignment. <laughs> find a, find a gavel. I'll get a, a gavel and an easy button. Just so when oh, something go. goes through flawless, we can do the. That was easy. easy Either that or an eject button, and we're all <laughs> <laughs> the no button. So to follow up on that. Um, I was looking into and in talking with Michael about that this summer a little bit, uh, also into Basic Robert's Rules, um, which is essentially something we follow already, uh, but in a couple of the different articles I was reading about um, how to run budget committees and how to be the chair or vice chair and roles and responsibilities, they mentioned that it's important usually for the boards to note that they're formally adopting a set of rules so that it's in the record. I don't know if that's happened or not. I mean, we essentially follow a Robert's rules already if you read through these. Um, that's the motions, the seconds, the votes, all of those kinds of things. Um, but there's a special subsection in Robert's rules for small boards, which are like 12 or less, that are specifically sort of designed for this type of a setting. That's the, uh, the orange document. And there's essentially, I think it's five, two, six, five, six, seven, seven, eight. So there's eight um, sort of notable differences, um, which we, again, basically already follow. Um, but I think it's probably good. And I know this didn't go out in the packets ahead of time. I didn't get it to Kelly in time. Um, but maybe at the, the next meeting or a meeting after or whatever, we can talk about that. And, make sure that those different sort of edits um, are things we either want to follow, don't want to follow, uh, things that should get codified. Like I know one of the ones you're allowed to make special rules for any board's allowed to make any set of rules they want. Robert's rules is just easy because everybody knows it already. But um, like one of the ones when it's a, a tie vote, this board has traditionally gone with the Whoever yes. made the motion. Whoever made the motion yes. that carries. And that's 
different from a standard Roberts rules. Usually you need a majority for those things to carry. So things like that um, are just, I think, important to get on the record and actually get in the, in the rules somewhere. Um, but yeah, if you read through these, uh, Jurassic Parliament, which is a ridiculous name for a legitimate business, but they are a, um, an advising firm that you can pay to come in and teach how to run meetings and you know this is a for-profit business but they had a couple of things online that were pretty good and that's what I I chose they had recommendations things they like things they don't like but you know there's things like the chair you're not allowed to talk unless you're standing you know the chair has to recognize you in all instances before you speak the chair is not allowed to in the discussions you know things like that that obviously don't pertain to this board um, but I just wanted to provide it um, I think a few of the things actually probably do help in terms of the um, what Mike was just talking about with everybody getting a chance to speak, which is that the chair allows everybody to have a chance to speak first before somebody speaks again. Um, that allows more voices to be heard, mm -hmm. things like that. So those are all just different things that we can look at um, and then decide on, you know, is this something we want to do or not do. But I just kind of wanted to bring it to everybody's attention since I know nobody's had a chance to review it, nothing to do today. I don't and then the blue one is really just sort of trying to simplify Robert's rules, make sure everybody sort of understands them. Um, but then I liked at the end, it gives you sort of a cheat sheet on the standard motions and the standard ways you have to kind of, you know, work through what gets seconded, what, you know, is open for a discussion, what can get amended, what can't, what's the majority. There's actually some things that legally require two thirds votes if you follow Robert's rules, those kind of stuff. Um, so. Food for thought for the next meeting, but I just kind of wanted to lay out what I was thinking when I uh, was looking at these. So, just a question: Are you thinking you would propose something like that we use Robert's rules of order, do it revised, something like that, or yeah, so just, just a simple something simple like that? Yeah, we would like, follow. That's, you know, that to me seems reasonable, but it, I mean, yeah. I'm just curious. If you're yeah, at no, that's exactly what I would say. I would say that you know, basically the the. Um, motion would be something along the lines of that we recognize that we're going to follow Robert's Rules of Order, the newest version as published for the um, for small boards rules. See, I mean, I don't even think that that is even necessary to say that has say for small boards because it's already saying there's a section in there for small boards. Because right. because right. usually this just use, use it just a very simplified language. Hey, we're going to use. Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised, mm -hmm. and keep it at that. Uh, I would just say we just take the rules we want and write them down and not mm -hmm. refer to anybody. I think that would be too cumbersome. That's well, a lot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's but, what I think. But you're requiring us to go to another document that <coughs> is, you know, I mean, these are our rules. I mean, I mean technically, technically uh, if you don't adopt Robert's Rules of Order, like if you're using parliamentary procedure, that is effectively what you're using. Do it at any time. Like, if you felt someone was violating the rules, you use Robert's right. Order. We already so whether, do. whether we <coughs> officially adopt it or not, it's what we're using. I wrote, whatever the law is, you know what I mean? If you say, you know how we say the majority rules stuff, so if that's not the law, then, you know, I don't want to break any know, laws. No, you so. can make your own. <laughs> Robert's Rules isn't a law. Robert's Rules is a recommendation for right. parliamentary procedure, essentially. It was written for huge parliamentary um, procedures, uh, but it recognizes that small boards have different things. Um, operate in different manners um, and so essentially we're already following this but we can also make our own rules there's very clear language in there about um, you know if boards have their own unique rules they're allowed to make I can't remember the exact term special exception rules or, or something like that well it was a perfect example like Johnson when, when it's like the, the you know say it's an even vote you don't have enough people you know to offset it right it's just an even number of yep. attendants if the Motion ca carries. If it wasn't carried, nothing would get accomplished. You know I mean, if you guys have got yeah. each other. And again, that's I think just something good to have in writing. I just remember, for example, last year when that did happen one time, I was very surprised that it carried just because that's non traditional. Every other <coughs> board I've ever seen, that's not the way it works. So See, I just I think would... it's good to have it in writing or and have everybody aware of it. That's all. I'm not trying to change right. anything we do, I'm just trying to recognize what we Right, the only reason I say because like, I saw Kerry years be before that, before you were, you know, on yeah. the board. You're, and I just thought that was, I just thought that was the rule because I seen it used. 
I think it's more fun that way. You come in here, you find out how it yeah, works. We're learning <laughs> stuff. How about yeah. this? <laughs> I, I personally think if it's a tie, it should fail. Do you guys, do you guys know of anything that, that is tying us to have a tie vote carry? No, I mean, like, what I've seen in the past, especially when you have an even number of committee members, what the chair will normally do is not vote unless it's a tiebreaker position. But if, what if it comes tie, a tie vote? Well, I mean, like, if I'm, it, what I'm saying is if seven of the members yeah. vote. I, I see what you're saying. But uh, um, well, let's say it was a tie, it was, the motion would fail, right? That's normal. That's, I mean, that's how it is normal. Because you can have abstentions even if you have. Yes, exactly. We so it would fail, and then you could bring it back onto the floor, change the wording to maybe see if you can get a majority. I and mean, how does the board of selectmen, how do they handle a tie vote? We don't have one because we only have a five member board. Unless somebody's not yeah, there. If somebody, but, yeah, we haven't been in a situation where yeah. they've abstained or been absent a member, with, so it hasn't come up since I've been there. I know that's a short term. Well, there's but nothing that you're aware of that requires, yeah. requires us to have a tie vote uh, pass. No, but I mean, maybe that's something that you could outline in your. I just think it's good to have everybody on the same page and operate oh, by yeah. the same rules. That's really mm -hmm. my thought process more on this. I'd say we're all going to have a bunch of homework and probably another meeting to you know, hash it out. we got plenty of meetings upcoming. <laughs> I think. A, no, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm we good with that. extra one on that. One yeah, we even eight. picked an extra up today. Look at that. <laughs> but that was all. Uh, so nothing really to be decided today. Just something to think about. Maybe reports? Right. You guys respect the, gra the gavel. I like it. <laughs> committee reports. Are there any committees that we need a member? Jeff's on. We only have two, right? It's One school school facilities. Facilities. Um, facilities and CIP, right? Yeah. Is there anything else? We talked to it. So you're right here. And you're an uh, alternate for one of them, correct? Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> oh, I thought somebody was. Now I gotta go look at minutes. <laughs> Hang on, we gotta find uh, it. Mr. Morrison. Uh, he's towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Michael Kelly at the alternate. Yep. Oh, there you go, Mike. Oh, I forgot my anniversary this year, and I remember that. <laughs> oh, Jesus, don't trouble. trouble life. Oh no, no, that I've already paid for that one. <laughs> I don't have a lot to report. Um, I would like it if anybody has any questions about what's going on and ongoing at the school, uh, budget-wise. Um, I know the, the roof has been repaired, the flat roof. There's no leaks. Um, the contractor that was doing the roof had hit a conduit. I believe that was going back and forth. And I think it's it sounds like it's been resolved. Gym floor has been refinished. Boilers are set and being piped right now. That seems to have gone over budget. But I don't have any numbers on that. Do you know if it's a good system? You know what I mean? High efficiency or whatever. It's worth sometimes spending a little bit more money with... Uh, you know, rates going up, you know, I mean, it'll pay back in the future. The Wiesman high efficiency boilers. We, we, I took a walk through with the, uh, with the um, facilities manager and stuff like that. So those are the ones that are like good parts. tight clearances, you know what I mean? Because I know some of these boilers are like top of line, but if you don't keep them clean and stuff, efficiency goes down, mm -hmm. down to nothing, you know. Yeah. The Salt, propane? Yep. You guys ever, did you guys ever get that propane pressure thing fixed, that problem? Um, that has not been repaired yet. So we were hoping it was happening this summer because we have a policy that we do not empty propane while students are in the building. Um, so it has to be drained and then they're replacing the valves um, to change the pressure. And so I believe the company that we had um, through, our, through our propane vendor that was um, doing the work was busy in Vermont with the floods early in the summer oh, and it pushed all their yeah. summer work off so I'm not we haven't heard an update about when they're hoping we were hoping maybe one of the long weekends coming up that it could be done mm -hmm. um, at that time you're trying to pick a window before it gets really cold yeah, because we like it to, I mean it's yeah. it's functioning it's just um, they found that we're not getting the full pressure from the tanks because of the valves 
Um, so now we're putting a new boiler in. We hope we'd like it to work as efficiently as possible. Mm -hmm. Is that for just the hot water or for the whole building's heat? It's the whole building's heat. It's the heating as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hear that something about the school was looking at putting some units outside for like extra classroom space like mod modulars the facilities committee was definitely discussing okay. yep so they uh, they are looking into that um this rfp's out they were looking into modulars it's gone back and forth they don't have a dollar amount yet that i'm aware of right. um but they, it's it's actively being worked on would that be for a warrant article this year yeah our yeah. intention was we we mm -hmm. the um we were finalizing the RFP last night at our meeting um, to hopefully have, obviously we need to know dollar amounts to even consider if that's something we feel. Um, so the facilities committee has done the work on that and um, now we'll just wait for the RFPs and then it'll be a discussion of, um, we, I mean ballpark numbers are thrown all over the place but you don't really know until, um, we just wanted to make sure the only, um, with the RFP last night was just making sure that all of the site work is included because that it's not just plop a building yeah. on the grass <laughs> yeah. you know there is this yeah. and that can be quite costly to do the prep just to pour a concrete pad um okay. it's astounding how much that costs to sure. just prep the ground for that um so we we're looking at um to ensure that because they have to hook it up to the current building i think it can support it but you know okay. all of that so that rfp will be going out and then we'll be hearing back and then the school board would then discuss if we feel like it's something that's feasible to do you know I, we hope to have community forums that's why we wanted to get the dollar amounts back to even see if it's possible for this year um, would it be a warrant article or would it be a warrant article for a bond so that's we don't until we it's know what cost it was but we assume it would be a bond right is that um, like do you decide or is it if it's over a certain dollar amount it becomes a bond Pretty much we would not, I don't think, ask the voters for a million dollars out of just the There's budget. not a set, like, by I'm law not, number. I'm not actually sure if there's, there's a number you, I think, that you can't bond under. I think that there's, but I'm not sure. I think that if you feel that it's not, it's too much to ask the voters. But then, you know, bond is a, a whole nother process. So that's, we'd have to have that all laid out. So we, it's kind of a time crunch. I know when they'd done the previous bids and things like they had way in advance we were already having you know community discussions at this point in time so it's it's quite and there's late. a lot of public hearing requirements it's, it's quite late to be doing this but i think the sentiment is that they at least wanted to really explore to see what that would cost as a different option than a full build like the previous so, so. not necessarily something that's physically happening this year so the, the we had heard that and i don't know jeff if you've been in the meetings that um what they're looking at is a, a modular that's built off site mm -hmm. so if it was approved it still has to go to bond which would be july um, they're talking about if impact fees could be used for site work so that could be started before because you can't use the funds until you have the bond um, but that it would be you know a six-week project or something once everything is really going they build it off site and bring it in and, and drop it so it could if be it available does, if it does go it's it is expected to go quickly right that could be open for next fall like that that's why they're looking at this option um, but again it's a it's a quick turnaround on um, kind of everyone's part to see if it's even feasible for this year so um, does anybody have any questions that they want me to ask at the next meeting what other uh, projects are they looking at working on in the like, short term I guess the roof the floor and the boilers i remember all those from last year mm -hmm. they had Modulars. gone they had gone through um they did have a food freezer that went down in the cafeteria uh they had a problem with that um that's that's been resolved they did lose a little bit of food um obviously it was, it was pretty warm out and they were it, it went back and forth with an older system um That's pretty much it. The only other thing I see is they maybe want to add heat for the for a locker room. No, it's a, it's the opposite. So the, there is a very large hot water tank because mm -hmm. they 
kids used to actually shower in the locker room straight mm -hmm. so they had a full hot water tank um, so they shut off the heat to that the, we were we don't need to keep that running heat mm -hmm. in a giant tank but that the bathrooms in the offices then lost all hot water oh. so they I think actually did put a really small kind of hot water tank just kind they of downsized for this. the water heater mm -hmm. so it was a really small unit it's, instead of running a big giant unit that no one is showering in the locker rooms. I apologize I'm going <laughs> off old it's, no notes. so it's just the opposite so it was a, it was a like an energy saving um, kind of proposal that um, we'd be saving a lot more than trying to heat a big tank when we're only using a very small amount of water from it. It's just a separate tank because it's on the gym side of the building. What do you do with locker rooms now? It's used for storage. Storage. No one uses. They're not open to the students. When I use those for the one-on-one -on -one instruction stuff, that we're always here. They're used for, used for. There's there's storage in them, um, and they're like big shower rooms. They're like locker. A lot like, of renovation. Yeah. Make them suitable. Um, so. I've only been in them once or twice. That's they're filled with PE equipment and stuff. That's that's what's in there. I wonder if that stuff could be put in a shipping container outside. Conics. I don't know. What about solar panels? I thought the school was looking at getting solar panels. So the solar panels has been discussed. We'll probably uh, be discussed again at CIP. Uh, that would be on the uh, sloped roof, I believe, and so that is slated in the CIP for like, maybe two more years out. Um, to uh, replace that roof and once the roof would replace then we would be looking at solar because we're not going to put it on a roof so no solar on the flat roof then so no I think Good. I'm not sure if that's an option for that type of roof bad idea. so um, bad idea. so I think the discussion was the sloped roof on the academic side the but flat it, so I guess if it's on the CAP thing plans then you're gonna buy the panels I have I'm I'm not really sure the the last I saw on the CIP was um, just a zero um, be like purchase because that fluctuates significantly and it was more um, to be discussed kind of after the roof because we would have to look at the options if it were leasing you know all the um, and that was not it was kind of a, a far out so it's I think just a placeholder but I think it has a zero dollar right. value on this so has there been discussion buying. about buying them versus one of these scam things like what happened here I think this building yeah, I, well, we, it was just brought chair. to us as CIP that it would be good, I, you know, a good thing to explore once we replace the roof. Um, we've had a lot of other building <laughs> issues, so that has not been a discussion um, because it's been kind of pushed out. So, but I'm sure that we would appreciate. So it's only worth it, I should say, if you're buying them. I know a lot of guys are working that being stuff. They bought them and stuff and have them on. And, and, it, and I like solar, don't get me wrong, it only works if you get the subsidies from the federal government, then the state, and the, this town actually gives to, to local, so we lost some revenue through that way, too. You know what I mean? You know, without subsidies, it's just it's not efficient. But I did see CIP, I don't know if it's still on there. It seemed like a science room for like $70,000 or something. So the for science classrooms were updated already. That happened this summer. Um, they put in um, accessible sinks. So they're like a double wide a sink so a wheelchair could go under the sinks to do uh, lab work. Um, the cabinets were replaced. Instead of open shelving at the top, they put uh, closed um, cabinets and they put uh, electrical. There was not, they didn't really have very functioning sinks and um, they put an electrical strip so that students could be at the counters of the, um, it's kind of like an L shape. They could be at the counters and all plug in with different devices instead of one single outlet for a bunch of students. So um, those updates were done. That was on Warren article. This oh, past, okay. This past All right. was on, went I'm going by pencil, but I think it, uh, with the electrical, it was 70, uh, 3741. It went over mm -hmm. from what I was told. Uh, there was 79,741 budgeted for it. But, um, you know, they, they added power strips around the, the whole perimeter and stuff like that. I just seen on that CIP for 2025. I didn't realize it was on the Warren article for two mm -hmm. years before that, right? 2023. No, it was on the it was on the Springs Warren. Yeah. Yeah, it was okay. this past year, I believe. Yeah. It was one of the things that was moved around in CIP. Yeah. That's just oh, the way, that was the way that it's always been on this committee. I do 
just totally took me by surprise. That's yeah. all. It's the only reason I mention it because it's the only one I know that's very unique. <laughs> that's why it was worded in the way it was. Yeah. 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 I was told that it was complete. There's no leaks. It's been tested. No Splash with water and stuff like that. I know we were talking last year how they need to do roof, roof work. Is this the roof work that we're talking about? Uh, it, that was it was roughly a hundred thousand to do the flat portion of the roof. Um, some of the sloped roof is up in the air about doing that. Is it worth going to metal instead of shingles? I heard you mentioned shingles. I could certainly ask a question. It's more money, I know that, but I'm talking about you're going to get more. It depends how long the school yeah, plans to operate out of the same school. I mean, if you guys yeah. are going to bail on it in 10, 15 years and try to get a new one, then it doesn't make as much sense. But a, if you get a standing seam metal roof, the solar panels can clamp directly to the standing well, seams. If, mm -hmm. if they're putting solar panels on it, you're hoping that they're going to stay there a while. Right. Or the building, or at least the building be repurposed like this one. Standing seam metal would, would be the longest lasting roof that you could put on there. And you could probably get 40 or 50 years out of it. It is three to four times as expensive, though. Yep. Yeah, the standing seam, well, yeah, the look of it and the work with the running the tool down and stuff. Mm -hmm. Does the, um, I don't, are we done with the facility stuff? I have another school <laughs> comp question. <laughs> do, you, do you know if this, the school, um, is a member of the, the National School Boards Association or the New Hampshire School Boards Association? New Hampshire School Boards Association. But not the national? I don't believe so. Do you guys send funds to those as part of being a member? The, Na the New Hampshire School Boards Association? Mm -hmm. Do you know how if, much that is? Um, oh. It's probably in the budget line. Um, the, I don't know it off the top of my head. Sure. Um, that's something that provides us with support for um, for policies. Um, they uh, We just like... Just, yeah, the Municipal Association is kind of the equivalent. So the School Boards Association um, provides trainings just like your budget. We have the Makita Law Conference. We have um, things like that um, offered to us. Um, they, they do support. They have a full policy database with their recommended policies. We have a delegates assembly coming up in October. Um, different school boards put forward um, resolutions, what they're supporting or not supporting throughout the state. And then school boards individually vote on those, and then a delegate goes and then votes on them um, to see what they're kind of putting there. Um, but it's also a lobbying organization, right? So some of the what is determined at that delegate assembly is determining voting on what would, what each of the towns are supporting to um, support or not support at the at the state level. Or you know to support if it's um, um, you know whatever type of legislation because ultimately legislation comes down there they're the ones who help us adjust our policies as needed based on you know cursive handwriting or you know that's whatever you know the different things come out and so the um, New Hampshire School Board Association is what um, um, what we utilize for a lot of support for those things and they provide the trainings and you know, they are a registered lobbyist uh, when New Hampshire Secretary of State. Um, but, but you're not a member of the, the National School Board Association, the federal one? Okay. And I believe that there was um, the New, New Hampshire School Board Association actually had um, sent, I'm not sure, letters or there was a, a big to do last year and at the New Hampshire School Board Association distance themselves from what the national organization mm, was So maybe doing. it would be like the school would be a member of the state one and then the state one. So you so, wouldn't be a member of the, the national one because you're already under the state one. I, that's, I, I'm not entirely sure, that, that, but that, that may be, like it but it, be, yeah. I think that the national made some steps last year that I believe that New Hampshire said we don't approve of, of that. So I think they have their own maybe delegates to the yeah, That's what I was getting at. Yeah. Yeah. I, those are those are things that I'm not really sure. I just know how we participate in the New Hampshire. Thank you. Thanks. Any other business? 
I was reminded from uh, Kelly that when you reply to the emails, just reply to one individual, because otherwise it could be seen as a oh, unofficial right. meeting. Warren. So, and that will save everybody from getting everybody's replies too. So it'll cut down on like that one email that had like 48 replies to it. So. Anyway, we'll do that. No other meetings. Uh, I guess our next meeting will be on the 28th at 7 p.m. If you want to weigh in on what's going on at the school, that meeting is too many pieces of paper. There it is. 20th. November 20th. At what time? I, I believe the, I think 6 p.m. I'm pretty sure. 6 p.m. Um, before our, our typical school board meeting. So okay. 6 p.m. for the public, um, the public hearing. Public hearing portion okay. of that. The 20th? 20th is the school board, yep, public hearing. At six, right? At six. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second that. I want to go home and watch a football game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to do Sandy. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. 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 Aye.